Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Law 9 for the year 2020, ratifying the founding agreement and bylaw of the Gulf Payments Company after being endorsed by the Shura and Representatives Councils on the 27th of March 2019. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, yesterday chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely with the participation of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. <laughs> أبعد الأثر في نفسي وعائلتي كذلك الشكر لسمو ولي العهد اللي أيضا زارني وتواصل سؤاله عني وأنا لهم شاكر على كل ما قاموا به تجاهي أثناء علاجي ودي أن أشكر جلالة الملك على كلمة التي وجهها للطلبة أنا أتكلم في وقتها وكلمة وافية وأتمنى إن شاء الله للملك وللجميع الصحة والعافية إن شاء الله. The Secretary General of the Cabinet, Dr. Yasser bin Isa Al Nasser, made the following statement. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble sentiments and kind wishes during His Royal Highness's treatment period abroad. He also expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his concern and visit to check on the health of the Prime Minister. His Royal Highness extended his thanks and appreciation to the citizens and residents of Bahrain and their kind sentiments through social media. The Prime Minister then praised the speech of His Majesty the King in which he addressed the students of the Kingdom and during which he encouraged the educational and administrative caters to exert more efforts during the current circumstances to face the spread of the novel coronavirus. The Cabinet followed up on the latest developments and national efforts to combat the spread of the virus, where His Royal Highness the Prime Minister praised the efforts and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince as evident by the precautionary measures taken in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness expressed thanks to public authorities and private institutions for meeting the needs of the people in such exceptional circumstances. He also hailed the medical caters for their noble and outstanding efforts. His Royal Highness then called on to check the availability of consumer goods during the holy month of Ramadan. He also ordered the continuous monitoring of these goods to be adequate in terms of both quality and price. The Premier also called on to intensify inspection teams to monitor the markets and ensure price stability. His Royal Highness has appointed the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to perform uh, the mentioned tasks. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism then gave a presentation on the Ministry's preparations to provide goods as well as the Ministry's efforts to maintain the prices of products in the market. The Cabinet then expressed the Kingdom's uh, welcome the decision of the Joint Forces Command of the Coalition to restore legitimacy in Yemen to ceasefire. The Cabinet praised the humanitarian decisions that take into consideration the circumstances that Yemen and the world are going through in light of the spread of the corona pandemic. The Cabinet expressed its hope that the Houthi group would respond to this humanitarian initiative in a way that achieves security and peace and guarantees a comprehensive political solution. The Cabinet then welcomed the decision of the exceptional OPEC and non-OPEC ministerial meeting chaired by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its ability to bring stability to the oil market. The Cabinet hailed the agreement of the G20 presided by Saudi Arabia and its role in supporting the oil market and enhancing international coordination to face the corona pandemic. In an effort to execute to His Royal Highness uh, the Prime Minister's directives, the Cabinet tasked the Ministry of Education to urge all schools to accommodate the needs of parents of students of private schools in light of the outbreak of the coronavirus. Schools have therefore agreed to reduce tuition fees by 5 to 10 percent, deferred payments until the next academic year and waived various fees. The Cabinet agreed to pay employees of the private sector who have social insurance for three months as of April 2020 through the Unemployment Fund. The Cabinet discussed a draft decree to build the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for diplomatic studies. The Cabinet agreed to amend the law that governs the commercial register on an urgent basis, which will allow the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to transfer the services permitted by the commercial register of one company to another. The amendment was referred to the Representatives Council for further review. 
The cabinet approved to assign the supervision of Al Aruba and the Travel Club from the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs to the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. The cabinet encouraged transitioning government bureaus, including the Ministry of Justice and Islamic Affairs, to use electronic and digital services. The cabinet approved updating the official list of sponsors of terrorism. The cabinet reviewed the efforts of civil society organization under the supervision of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development and in cooperation with the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration to train their caters to combat the financing of terrorism through non-profit organizations. The cabinet approved a recommendation to reorganize and develop the central market of Rafah. The cabinet approved a recommendation to admit graduates of technical and career programs into the University of Bahrain. The cabinet approved the government's response to a recommendation on a specialist hospital in the southern governorate. The Representative Council Speaker Fawzia Zainal chaired the council's meeting, which was held for the first time in the history of parliamentary work in the kingdom. At the beginning of the meeting, Zainal affirmed that the session, which was held remotely, comes in line with the precautionary measures and preventative steps taken to combat the coronavirus, and to affirm that making achievements in serving the country and citizens is a national responsibility that is being assumed with full devotion. In order to make more achievements in light of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa, she expressed gratitude and appreciation to the representatives for their interest in holding uh, this session, hailing the efforts of the Council's General Secretariat in making the necessary arrangements to hold the meeting. I would like to congratulate ourselves for the uh, first session, uh, parliamentary session, uh, to be uh, held on um, online process. I think we have uh, managed to uh, take a very good session today. Uh, the Secretary General of the um, uh, Council here have uh, taken all the good steps in order to achieve uh, a very successful meeting, very successful session. Uh, we would like to also emphasize that uh, the people of Bahrain uh, can follow an, uh, the online session uh, thoroughly and at the same time can uh, communicate with their MBs uh, with regards to the uh, issues uh, under discussion. The Minister of Interior General, uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, remotely inaugurated the first integrated electronic package of identity card and population registry system, which was launched by the Information and e Government Authority through its national portal, Bahrain.bh. In the context of enhancing precautionary measures that are part of the national efforts to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. On this occasion, the Minister of Interior hailed the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to invest and employ technology in various fields for the service of the country and its citizens. He also commended the support and follow-up of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa for these constructive initiatives which come in implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to utilize various modern technologies to contribute to reducing the spread of the coronavirus and maintain the health and safety of all those who visit service centers. The minister affirmed that this package of electronic services will contribute to achieving excellent performance in providing better services for citizens, which will translate the strategies and priorities of government action and achieve the goals of sustainable development. He noted the need to continue development efforts and the employment of technologies in various initiatives and services provided to citizens to keep abreast of modern and less civilized or specialized applications in various government processes. General uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah directed to educate all segments of the society on the advantages of electronic services, self-service. He commended the role of national talents and expertise, which contributed to the speedy completion of ID cards and population registry services through his integrated and comprehensive packages of electronic services. For his part, the CEO of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid, asserted that the authority developed complementary electronic services that contribute to speeding up access to different groups of the society. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held a telephone call with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. The two sides discussed recent political, security, and regional developments, as well as the efforts exerted by the UN at the international level to maintain international peace and security, as well as its endeavors to support the country's efforts across the world to combat the novel coronavirus COVID 19. Dr. Zayani conveyed to the UN Secretary General the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and his appreciation for the huge role played by the UN 
to maintain international peace and security as well as its efforts to support sustainable development across the world and face global challenges. The Foreign Affairs Minister affirmed the Kingdom's support to the initiatives of the Secretary General of the UN for an immediate global ceasefire to harness the global efforts to face and combat the spread of the coronavirus. He also noted the distinguished role of the World Health Organization in supporting the efforts of countries across the world in combating the coronavirus. Dr. Zayani stressed that the announcement of a unilateral comprehensive ceasefire by the Joint Forces Command of the Coalition to restore legitimacy in the Republic of Yemen came as an immediate response to the invitation of the UN Secretary General for a global ceasefire. He expressed the hope of the UN to continue its efforts to pressure the Houthi group to respond to ceasefire and accept uh, the resumption of political negotiations led by the UN Special Envoy to Yemen, Martin Griffiths, stressing the need to continue the efforts to reach a ceasefire in Syria and Libya. For his part, the UN Secretary General requested the Minister of Foreign Affairs to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King, as well as his appreciation for Bahrain's commitment and solidarity with the UN in its efforts to combat the coronavirus pandemic. He also praised the precautionary measures taken by the Kingdom to prevent the spread of the virus and ensure the continued health and safety of Bahrain's citizens and residents. He also commended the royal directives of His Majesty the King to ensure the provision of medical care and health services for examination, quarantine and treatment for all citizens and residents in the kingdom alike, which further reflects the sincerity and humanity of His Majesty the King and his firm belief in universal values and ethical principles. The Labour and Social Development Ministry and Youth and Sports Affairs Ministry signed an MOU, according to which the Youth Ministry will use the electronic system for non-government organizations. This came within the framework of joint efforts between various ministries and government agencies to enhance coordination, as the Ministry of Labour will provide the Ministry of Youth with all the necessary information to activate the electronic system in the optimal way, with uh, the purpose of the latter carrying out financial and administrative oversight tasks on national clubs and youth empowerment centers to ensure the implementation of procedures. The speedy entry of requests and transactions and their completion as required. It's our obligation today to, to thank uh, His Excellency the Minister of Labor and Social Development um, on, number one, his initiative. Um, he has spearheaded a program for the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports um, with regards to a non-duplication of, uh, of activities within government. Um, so what the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports had identified was that the Ministry of Labor and Social Development since 2011 had um, started in initiated and completed a transformation program with regards to technology and the adoption of technology and digitization um, in their programs uh, and their processes. So what the Ministry of Youth and Sports had requested was instead of us embedding and creating the same processes, um, for us to be able to benefit and uh, cooperate with the Ministry of Labor and plug into their existing system. Um, this gives us tremendous savings with regards to operational costs and also gives the user-friendly element uh, that we're all aspiring to. As part of the national precautionary measures being taken to limit the outbreak of the coronavirus COVID-19, the Ministry of Health conducted a number of random inspections on food delivery workers who work for restaurants and various other commercial establishments. The Ministry expressed thanks and appreciation to the owners of these establishments for their cooperation and said the measures that are being taken are intended to screen all suspected cases of the coronavirus in order to provide to them various facilities including quarantine and medical care as per the medical guidelines.